Shalom, people. This is Brother Laws coming at you with another video. And this will be a continuation of the lesson we started yesterday. Uh, the tower is almost ready. We want to talk a little bit today about a few more uh, places uh, of significance, particularly the Georgia Guidestones, which I consider to be a, a another one of these high places that uh, Satan and the elite are, are using to get their message out, uh, sort of like uh, Stonehenge, but what a lot of people don't understand is Stonehenge is one of many, many, many uh, stone uh, monuments and monoliths around the world. You can find uh, stone uh, obelisks, I mean, I'm sorry, monuments. Obelisks are part of it, but you can actually find the gigantic stone circles all around the earth. This is why I'm telling you this is an interconnecting thing. This is not just one country. In Africa, you have a lot of uh, monoliths, a lot of obelisks, a lot of uh, even we know that in a lot of African nations, the Roman Catholic Church has set up a lot of uh, their statues to priests and to popes. And uh, um, I was even last year looking at a video of a statue, I think it was in Ghana, where they had a white angel uh, with wings uh and he had a sword drawn and his foot was on the neck of a black demon and if you can believe that uh it was you know black people that were actually coming to that um uh that statue not understanding that this is one of those high places where demonic uh energy is is generated it's it's a seat we're going to talk a little bit about that today, talking about these seats that Satan has. And, and therefore, the the you don't just have, like I said, the tall skyscrapers that are built in defiance of, of Yah. Uh, also, uh, illustrating the message that Satan one day wants to get back into heaven and pull Yah down, but also... He uses um, uh, natural um, monoliths, you know, like maybe certain mountains or mountain ranges. And he also, like we was talking about Mount Seir, but we, he also uses um, uh, um, uh, cities that have certain um, sites of antiquity in them. All of these are used as sites of defiance against the Most High. And so we have to identify them so that our people will know. And then also they will know how to pray against these things because we are commanded to do that. And we're going to show you that scripture. But let's get uh, here to the Georgia Guidestones first. I'm going to read you an article written back in 2010, March 30, 2010. There was an article by a, jo a gentleman named Joseph Laycock. And the title of the uh, article was Ten Commandments of the Antichrist, the Georgia Guidestones. It said, back in April of 2009, Wired Magazine published a story on the history of a strange monument in rural Elberton, Georgia, the granite capital of the world, known as the Georgia Guidestones. The monument consists of four 16-foot high slabs of granite arranged around a central column and topped with a capstone weighing 25,000 pounds. Carved into the face of each slab is a list of 10 precepts for creating a better society written in eight modern languages. On the four sides of the capstone are written 
the words, let these be God stones to an age of reason in Sanskrit, Babylonian, cuneiform, classical Greek, and Egyptian hieroglyphs. The central column and capstone are also equipped with holes uh, uh, as, uh, astromologically aligned so that the guide stones can serve as a compass and clock. The popular consensus is that these stones were meant to survive a global apocalypse and aid survivors in creating a new enlightened society unveiled in 1980 and built by an unknown party the monument has stood for nearly 30 years outside of town attracting the curious to elberton however in the last 10 years the guy stones have garnered the attention of conspiracy theorists who see their message as anti-christian and they call for a global government this new reading of the guy stones ultimately led vandals to deface the monument sometime in December 2008. Good for them. The official story of the guy stone origin is that Joe Finley Jr., president of the Elberton Finishing Company, was contracted in 1979 by one Robert C. Christian to commission a monument. Christian was a synonym used for someone representing a small group of loyal Americans who believe in God. <laughs> Which God? Finley has since died, but uh, Randall Sullivan of Wired interviewed Wyatt Martin, the president of Granite City Bank, and the only living man who allegedly met Christian. At the as the project's banker, Martin allegedly learned Christian's true name, but would not reveal it. Martin claims he received letters and phone calls from Christian until around the time of the 9-11 terrorist attack and assumed Christian is dead, though some believe Christian never existed. While construction was still underway, Martin and Finley were accused of perpetrating a hope either out of a music amusement or to promote Finley's business. Both men took lie detector tests, which they passed. Sullivan suggests that the hoax rumor may have come from rival granite workers. According to Jim Mild, author of Weird Georgia, shortly after the, the guy stones were unveiled, a local minister stated his suspicion that Mr. Christian is not a Christian and that the monument was designed for the worship of the sun as well as the devil. Uh, contemporary pagans, UFO buffs, and New Agers were naturally attracted by the mystery of the site. New myths were created that the monument was built upon a power nexus or a place sacred to Native Americans. One legend holds that visitors who point both arms at the monument, one palm up, one palm down, will receive a psychic message from the stones. Another guy stone, Amara Yoko Ono, composed a three monument score entitled Georgia Stone. In 2000, Dr. Reagan R. Davis, a Christian minister, visited the stones and concluded that the guy stones may well describe the ten commandments of the antichrist particularly upsetting were the precepts to maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature god reproduction wisely encouraging fitness and diversity and let all nations rule internally resolving in external disputes in a world court. Davis interpreted these messages as a call for a world government, a policy of state-sponsored eugenics, and a calling of billions of people. This new interpretation elevated the guide stones from mere local curiosity to the subject of national notoriety among conspiracy theorists and Christian dispositionalists.
and I've heard about the Godstones a long time ago. Uh, I wasn't as well uh, studied about them as I am now. Um, I've heard rumors that this um, Robert C. Christian guy might have been Ted Turner. Some people believe that because he is from Georgia. And he is a globalist, or was a global. I don't even know if Ted Turner is still alive. He he's the one that started T uh, uh, T T uh, TBS, uh, um, CNN, and a bunch of other channels. Uh, HL HL HLN, all of that was started by Ted Turner, and and, and also you know he was ma married to uh, Jane Fonda for a long time. But uh, uh, that's, that's the, 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 the word was that he was actually Robert C. Christian and that, you know, of course, he him being a globalist and a eugenicist and all these uh, above things, it would make sense that it probably was indeed him. And that indeed the guy stones was put there as a, a place. And uh, because one of the things that I, I, I forgot to state was that not only is the the height of these um, monoliths important as a sign of rebellion, but also the the weight, because you have some the bellback blocks in I think it's Syria or Lebanon that these these blocks are so massive and they don't know how they was able to move them that they said it would take the most sophisticated modern crane to lift these stones and bail back in the Middle East and that it would in 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 this unknown how they will quarry and move miles so that you see here with the Georgia guy stone that they had the um the capstone itself weighing twenty five thousand pounds that this is another important uh, thing is it's, it's trying to show the 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 i guess the, the the power and the technological advancement of man or the beings that gave man the the, the uh knowledge to do these and therefore people marvel at this and say what great power is this i want to have part of this great power that was in able uh, um, ordinary man to do these things and to empower us you see because it's all about the devil trying to show his power and showing what we can achieve as uh human beings without the help of god he wants to, to do that with these 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 skyscrapers going into the sky or these uh uh, uh astronomically heavy uh, weights or these um, um magnificent uh, structures like the, the 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 Christ in uh looking overlooking Rio Rio de Janeiro, which we know is totally occultic, which is probably one of the reasons why th that place is so demonic and, and 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 so much suffering and so much death has happened in Rio de Janeiro, one of the most one of the more dangerous cities in the world. Poverty, crime, all that. How can that be when you got the picture of Jesus Christ, which we know is a falsehood because he did he was not uh European, he was not Cesar Berger. We know that 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 the image is totally demonic. He called himself the beast. So you have a a a a, a gigantic monolith uh, uh, looking over Rio de Janeiro that's uh, that was a, a he called himself the beast and also was uh, a bisexual, all these things, and, and and this is the this is the blessing, but it is giving power to those that want to keep the people of Rio de Janeiro and Brazil in perpetual poverty. It is, it is uh, 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 creating an atmosphere where the 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 Roman Catholic Church has power, and I believe it's strategic. The, you know, of Brazil being where it is, that it keeps that power, that energy emanating over the whole continent of South America, where most, if not all, the countries are still under Catholic rule. The last pope, or rather the pope that they have now, he came from South America, he came from Argentina. Catholic Church 
still has great sway there. And I believe that the, the fact that you have all these um, monoliths there is a testament to that. Now we look at the Georgia Godstones, like I, I stated here, it is a it is a place as it stated here for people to come basically meditate or to worship or to receive messages. And notice it is it, stated that if you raise your one palm up and one palm down, which is uh the Masonic salute. If you look at uh uh the Baphomet, some of the pictures you have of the Baphomet, I'm not gonna make the the sign, but it's it's, it's got uh, one hand up and one hand down, and that's as above, so below, you know, and 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 also the fact that um it said that um it wanted to maintain the world population at 500 million, right? So that um. We supposedly are uh, way past that, and so that the globalists is this is kind of a, a a blueprint of what they want to do, not what they they can do, but what they want to achieve. And what did you hear from Bill Gates um, in some of these interviews that he, he he's put out on TED Talks and all this about how you know we got to cut the carbon footprint and how we can control uh, uh, um, uh, the population through birth control, which is abortion, and uh, through, um, you know, different um, uh, vaccinations that make women sterile, make men sterile, and also through war, through uh, starvation, through all these things. That these, these godstones, these monoliths, the, these high towers uh, um, are, are, are points of energy that people can focus in on and, and, and draw demonic encouragement and demonic illumination. Notice what it said. People can receive psychic messages from these godstones. This is all of the devil. This is all of the devil. But there is hope for us. Scriptures give us hope against these things because it, it's it's no different than in in Yeshua's day, and in fact, it probably was more ancient monoliths, that, you know, back then before they were destroyed by a natural disaster time that they had to confront than what we have today. We have our own modern satanic monoliths that we had to deal with, like the Georgia Guidestone, but they had the the Colossus of Rhodes. They had all these different, uh, they had the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, all of this stuff. They had to be contended with, which were seats of the devil, which we will talk about shortly. But this is how we deal with these towers. This is how we deal with these monoliths. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, uh, the, the 10th chapter. And we're going to start at verse 1. Now, this is Paul or Shaul talking. He said, Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of uh, Messiah, who in presence am base among you, but being absent am bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yahuwah to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Yahuwah, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of uh, Messiah, and having in a readiness to avenge all disobedience when your obedience is full, right? So here Paul says that the weapons 
that we use to pull down the spirits behind these monoliths through these towers, almighty through Yah to the pulling down. Because these things are strongholds. They're indeed strongholds. When we um we think about the um the World Trade Center. Center, the first World Trade Center, they had the two towers, which were actually um, in Kabbalah, many believe that they represented uh, uh, the two the two pillars that uh, were at the entrance of the temple that the the first temple that Solomon built, not the temple he built for his wives, but the temple he built for Yah. It, the the two the two pillars had a name, right? And uh, those two pillars, I think they were covered with brass or whatever. I think that they were both carried away into Babylon or whatever. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. But that in the Kabbalah's uh, thing that they, uh, when the when when they they were setting up all these high high towers in the city of New York as a direct affront to the most high they they were set up think about uh uh rockefeller plaza one of the places where they have it's the the address of the rockefeller plaza it, um i mean in front of the rockefeller plaza you have a, a a statue of uh apollo one of the titans and i think is it Trump Tower? One of the buildings they have there um, is the, the the address is six 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 or something like to that effect. In the Chrysler Building, we in New York, one of the one of the world's first uh, uh, skyscrapers. Christ, Chrysler means Christ Slayer. You understand what I'm saying? When they built these 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 buildings, they were built in defiance of Yah. When they built the World Trade Center, they were basically saying New York City is our temple, our temple of wealth. These two pillars are our temple of wealth. That's what they represented. And the crazy thing is they said that the, 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 the people in the city, a lot of them didn't like the the twin towers because they blocked out a lot of sunlight and it was very expensive to rent office space in it so that at the time of the 9-11 uh insider attack and i believe it was an inside attack definitely it was for a reason we're gonna get to that but when when it happened they said the reason the death count was not more than what it was is that a lot of that space was empty people just couldn't afford it. They couldn't afford to 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 um you know rent in it. Not to mention they said they were full of asbestos because at the time that they were built and then it it was gonna be a, a great amount of money to do that. But also the fact that this was going to be the destruction of the those towers was gonna be a phoenix moment for the elite meaning uh they were going to implode the the twin towers right as a sign that okay this monument is coming down because we we're getting ready to enter into a new age right we're going to get ready to go into new age and the, and and we're going to get a replacement to these monoliths but right now these monoliths have to come down and then a, 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 a one that's even greater is going to go up. So what happened when the Twin Towers came down? They already had started um, rolling up plans to build a new World Trade Center. And when they completed the, world, the new World Trade Center, which was completed during the presidency of, of Barack Obama, which I think he dedicated it, the is it was one world trade center i think it is it's one building now get this the building is 
1,776 feet tall. And some say, oh, they did that to commemorate uh, 1776 when America was born or the independence or whatever. But also um, that was 1776 was also around the time that the Illuminati uh, organization was created that was to to get rid of all vestiges of of God and it's going to the age of reason right now re now understand when they say get rid of God they're not they're not talking about their God which is Satan they're talking about one in heaven Yah in heaven that's who they want to get rid of so it is a tower built to the God of reason which Satan is the the light bearer, the one that gives us light, gives us reason according to what they believe. And so that this building was, okay, these towers were brought down just like Obadiah said, but we're going to, we, we, uh, 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 I think it's another scripture and I don't, I'm not quite sure where it's at. Many of you that, uh, you know, study thing dealing with Esau knows what I'm finna say. Uh it, it's a scripture that says talks about Esau talking about he's gonna rebuild. I think it could be Isaiah, I'm not sure. But he, he uh the Bible say Yah said though you rebuild it, I'm gonna pull it down again. But in we know in this case they self imploded these because they wanted to come up with something newer and more better and so the defiance of Yah continues but the weapons of a warfare are not carnal but mighty through Yah to the pulling down of strongholds and just as the first world trade center came down even though it was at their hands these all these the bible talks about the days when you know babylon the, the smoke of his torment is going to go up and it's going to be destroyed in one hour. And all these towers and all these monoliths and all, all of it's got to come down. It's got to come down because it's all in defiance. The pyramids have to come down. See, I don't understand if people understand when Yeshua comes back, what he's really going to do. People are thinking that, you know, when Yeshua comes back, you know, especially us as people of Yah, at least ones that, that 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 know what we are the people but not that but are not saved we are the people by blood but you are not of yeshua unless you're born again so all those people out there that know we are the, the people and they think that we're gonna go back into ratchetness whenever he brings us into the wilderness or he brings us to the land you're in for a big big surprise because he, he he said that he's not gonna he's gonna he's gonna rule the nations with a rod of iron. He's not gonna be putting up with this. He's gonna get rid of all, um he's gonna get rid of all these monuments and in, 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 in defiance of, of Yah. The skyscrapers gotta come down, these paintings, all of this stuff that's a front to Yah is gonna be destroyed. So all your great works of art, all your monoliths, all your great cities that were built. You know, to reach into the sky, they all got to come down. That's why it's going to be so much destruction before Yeshua comes back. Because he's going to waylay it all. It's got to be waylaid. Because it's in defiance to him. So the, those things that we highly esteem, they're debased in the eyes of, of Yah. And that's, you know, and, and so right now when we see these things, we must pray against them. Because one day they're going to come. Think about what happened in 2020 when they started pulling down those statues, those Confederate statues. A lot of black people like myself were were happy to see them come down. I, you know, I didn't particularly like them. But to the 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 the, the people, you know, who whose uh, ancestors, whatever, were connected to them, you, they looked at them as in a religious sense. When all they had to do was look in the, in the scriptures and see what Yah did to the the statue that uh, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed of, and Daniel interpreted for him that Yah was going to destroy that, 
that there was going to come time when all these statues was going to come down, whether it was statues to Confederate generals, statues to Gandhi, statues to Martin Luther King, any of these things are a front because they are, on, they, he said, don't make no graven image. One of the things in the, in the commandments, don't make no graven image of things above or below. And so that a lot of people are not going to be real happy with the reign of Yeshua when all this stuff is, is, is way laid. That's why after the thousand year reign, when Satan is going to be let out of the bottomless pit, there's going to be a lot of people that's going to, the Bible says, is going to join him in trying to rebel against Yeshua's reign because they're going to be like, he took away all the statues. He took away all the skyscrapers. He took away the cities. He he made life so much simpler and, and, and this and that. And I don't like living like this and blah, 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 blah. I want Satan again so we can do this, that, and other. And then the Bible said that, you know, the fire is going to come down and consume him because these people will still have the principle in them that Satan has put into a lot of our heart that they want to complete the tower. They want to complete it. They want to be able to, as uh, uh, Alistair Crowley says, do as thy will is the whole of the law. They want to be able to do as they will. They want to be in defiance against Yah. They don't want him to destroy them again in their, in their sin. And therefore, that's why the battle uh, of Armageddon is going to be is going to take place because they're going to say with all this technological power, maybe once and for all, we can try to get rid of Yah's son. But of course, that's not going to happen. But still, as I stated before, after the thousand years of reigning, mankind is still going to have sin in his heart where he's going to say, man, and that's going to, that's going to include uh, 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 people of, of color. It's going to be, in fact, coming out of Babylon. It's probably when, as Yah starts pouring more and more judgment on Babylon, you're going to see that a lot more of us are going to be upset with what's happening than some of, some, some of the, the people that, you know, uh, were our enslavers, their descendants. Because a lot of them are starting to wake up and understand, you know, not just that we are the people, but like the scripture says, we have inherited lies from our forefathers that and then also those that are into um these different things that we see going on in the in the in this in the so society uh with, with, with uh the sexual freedom and all these other things they, they and and now they they're under the you they are starting to understand that it's getting out of hand it's getting out of hand where you know people are um, marrying dogs and and horses and all this other kind of stuff. They understanding that the, the Pandora's box is reaching its zenith. Meaning these things have always happened, but they they'll get into a societal level now that there will be no turning back. That the ultimate, you know, will, will be will be a new uh new Rome, you know, a 2.0 um with just so much perversion and in and and blood and and everything you can see it in the MMA they want they need more blood we need no more blood we need you know except for the pandemic coming down but we need more blood we need more hard hitting action it's like they can't get enough and so these these structures that are built in defines to Yah. Yeshua when he comes, he's gonna he's gonna tear him down. All all of it. All this this stuff. And and that's that's even go to Matthew the sixteenth chapter. In verse seventeen. It says and Yeshua Answer and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my assembly, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. 
All right. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, you know, long time ago when I was a when I was when I was into Christianity and I was a young Christian, that this this uh used to always uh perplex me. What does it mean the gates of hell shall not prevail? And so as you know, of course, as I studied and got more and more deeper into understanding the scripture, I came to understand that, that this had to do with you know when in the in the when when paradise was was in, or Abraham's bosom was in the center of the earth before Yeshua carried captivity uh, captive and and on and, and gave gifts uh ca ca uh carried captivity uh into the into the under the altar of, of heaven and how um uh the, the in Abraham bosom was here and then Gehenna hell fire hell it was separated by that great body of water that scientists talk about and what you you read about in the in the bible where the, where uh um Lazarus asked um um the rich young ruler asked Lazarus to dip his finger in the water they said that the water beneath the earth is is way more than what's on the surface of the earth, but is it was what was separating Abraham's bosom in the fiery part of hell. But anyway, that the gates had to do with the, I guess the portal or whatever it is that people would go through when they went into Abraham's bosom or they went into the fiery part of hell. That this was what kept man's spirits uh ju you know just men's spirits from being able to go up into to heaven is because the the blood of uh, the sh uh, the shed blood of, uh, of yeshua hadn't come but then when it came that he went down and because and when he showed his the nail prints on his hands and his feet and the and the and the, and the, and the hole in his side that this was the authority that he needed to open those gates and lead captivity captive and give gifts unto men and empty that place and what we have the hollow earth theory that many talk but it's not hollow it still has uh Gehenna hell there it's still there the burning part up there but anyway that on the surface of this planet they have places you know uh caverns groups of people they have satanic power seats that they have that basically have a stronghold over certain cities. It's like, you know, it's hard to get in. Um, in particular, some big cities. I don't know how true it is. It could be true or not, but I remember hearing a story from a uh, evangelist years ago this is decades ago where he said that whenever he used to come into particular cities he could feel the heaviness of the evil on on him when he would you know go to to stay there to run a revival or whatever and he said one one particular time he came to the city of new york to run a revival and he had a hotel room so he said when he came back one night from preaching he said a black cat was sitting on his bed and he was wondering what is how did this cat get in my room because you know i don't you know i don't know what what happened you know how this cat got in my room but he said anyway the the cat uh rose up and he jumped on the on the floor and he said rose up into a big dark demon i don't get traumatized by what i'm saying because i understand that uh, demons don't necessarily have to be dark. This is just what he said. So that's not be traumatized. I said, well, why couldn't it couldn't have been a white demon or a white devil or whatever? But anyway, that's just go with what he said. He said it rose into a dark demon. And he said he rebuked it in the name of Jesus. And we know all about that. 
that even in the time of my ignorance, if we call upon the name of the Lord, whatever that name was at the time, he would hear. So at that time, and in, for many this time, when they call on the name, Yah, God will answer. And in this particular place, he said that the thing went away. So New York City is a place where there's a lot of evil. There's a lot of people there that do good too now. Not as much as it's evil, but it it, has, it it puts a a atmosphere where it's easier for de demonic activity to operate. And what Satan has been trying to do with all these monoliths and obelisks and all these seats that he he's trying to set up, he's trying to create a atmosphere of almost impregnable evil on this earth that's why they keep talking about global warming and trying to shut the sun out it's, it's too much sunlight and they got people up here spraying chemtrails and they you know they pretty much already admitted it that's what they've been doing for decades and decades and decades is is is, is uh you know releasing uh some kind of aluminum particles or whatever you know spray particles in the atmosphere uh, aluminum carbohydrate, basically what you you know would be in deodorant, basically to try to reflect the sunlight back toward the sun and make it dim on this side, because they want to put almost like a perpetual darkness around the, the earth and 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 shut y'all out and make this place a uh, and be able to 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 bring up the, the, the evil spirits and be like it was before the flood. They wanted to be before the flood with the demonic activity and demons and all that stuff was just running rampant on the on the on the surface of the earth. And y'all said, I gotta I gotta shut this down and I gotta put some barriers in place. And that's why the Bible said he he created uh Hades for the the, the 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 demons and the angels to go it was never created for mankind but when mankind starts sinning he said okay i'm gonna have to this is where you're gonna go now the the fallen angels are in tartarus the demons are still allowed to wander as they go so the, the people that's occupying uh hell right now are people that have died in their sins died without you know, being being able to call upon the name of of Yah, they, they're occupying it right now. The demons in, in the place in, in, that was originally for them, they they're gonna go there. You know, as the, the judgment. That's why in Corinthians it said, "No, you're not. That you shall judge angels. They're still allowed to go around and do their dirt. But when we die, if you're not." born again if you're not believer or you have not called on the name of, of Yah that's where your 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 spirit is gonna go it's gonna go to burn I know in Adventism I was a seven day Adventist they believe in soul sleep but there is no soul sleep there is no annihilation there is a literal lake of fire he fire is fire I I, I you know um I'm I'm just letting you know but that is real, you know, what would be the, the fear of just never existing? You just would never exist, but the fear of forever being on fire, which is not meant always to, you know, I think Jews said some say with fear, hating even the flesh, but that's not always the, um, what's that word? Ideal way to, try to get people to serve Yah. It's through fear. It through it should be through the faith because he said he give every man a measure of faith, right? And faith without faith it is impossible to please Yah. So that uh he that comes to uh Yah must believe and believe that he is a water of them that diligently seek him. And so we have to come away from these these uh um these monoliths. We have to come away from all these these uh, uh religious statues but which uh, like the 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 christ over the the city of rio de janeiro we got to come away from this wickedness we got to come away from 
um, uh, these uh, crucifixes, these, these gigantic crucifixes and uh, and these uh, uh, portraits of uh, Yeshua and, and Mary, whether they black, white, yellow, whatever, we need to come away from them. We need to come away from the, the, the cathedrals, the gigantic cathedrals, which you will see in Europe. You know, I was I was in Germany. I was stationed in Germany with my family back in the 80s. And a lot of those Catholic churches, you know, you know, they, they were just right tourist sites because a lot of Europe people kind of got turned off uh, from religion starting in World War One and really before then. But around World War One, World War Two, when they said, you know, if, if we're a Christian nation and they're a Christian nation, Who's who's y'all gonna fight for? Is he gonna fight for? He can't fight for both of us. We know that neither, none of them were Christian nation because there is no such thing as a Christian nation. But just the fact that these gigantic um, monoliths, right, uh, are there these these cathedrals. So what is what religion replaced what was in Europe is was Islam when you know they brought in some of the Turks and other people from the Middle East to work on some of the farms there. And now, of course, you know, Africans that are coming from Africa and, and uh, places so that Islam now is, you know, there and they got mosques and stuff there now. But those cathedrals, they were gigantic. They were everywhere. I'm telling you, one city, Augsburg, it, it's, you know, you just all you see. These at one time were uh, uh, centers for demonic. Think about the the Cathedral of Notre Dame when it burnt down. You know that was a, that was a, that was a seat of Satan. That was a another place built in defiance of Yah. They say now it's gonna probably be over a billion dollars. It's gonna take to rebuild it. And I think they pretty much raised that. Because it's a seed of Satan, which we're going to get to right here, that they 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 want to hold on to that. Now, the Vatican is the main seat, but the, uh, uh, the Cathedral of Notre Dame was right up there in France. It was. But all throughout Europe, in a lot of middle star towns, you will see that when Roman Catholicism took over, they made sure they built a lot of these monoliths, obelisks. The big that big obelisk that's in there in 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 the Vatican that I think that comes from Egypt. They made sure to put these places of defiance to the truth, the true God. Now we know that they didn't really believe in the true God in heaven. They believe the Pope is is Christ or Yeshua here on earth, and we know that uh, Catholicism is just. European version of uh, uh, Nimrod or Baal worship. That's all it is. But let's go to, uh, we want to talk about the seat of Satan. Um, in Revelations, the third chapter, the second chapter, Revelations, the second chapter. And we're going to go with verse 13. But yes, we getting back to Matthew where he said he gave the keys to uh, Peter to bind and loose, right? This is the inheritance of all believers, Hebrew or Gentile, that are believers. But it was given first to our ancestors. But he said that that power was also to those that will believe that we have the authority to bind and loose at the at the discretion of the holy spirit because we don't you know we 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 have to be careful of going and 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 challenging certain things that we might not be equipped to 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 deal with that just say a a a brand new believer in Yeshua that would try to go up against a witch's covering that was that he or she was coming under a, you know that 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 he knew about and he would try to come come and attack against him he might not be as well equipped 
spiritual knowledge to do that. That's why I believe it, when Paul first came into the knowledge of salvation, y'all had to send him off to be in Tarsus for about 11 years, building tents. You know, that was after he had the 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 three years that he was in the desert of Arabia receiving revelation from Yeshua. And then he um he had to go back to Tarsus because he wasn't going he wasn't being received. And I believe and then he also had to go down to Antioch for some years in fellowship with Barnabas and and you know Simeon and Niger and on all those the all of the, the 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 black Jews that were down there before he was sent off and he was going to be able to deal with some of these um uh evil um seats that he was going to come up against some of the places he came up against in Asia Minor and uh even in uh, uh Israel at that time uh in Caesarea Philippi they had a temple built to Pan they had a temple built to Pan, the half man, half goat that was there in Israel at the time that Yeshua was there. So they had to deal with, they had the, the gigantic stone monuments of Bel Belbeck that was there at that time, which was probably had to do something with something similar to a Stonehenge dealing with. Uh, a, so they had all this stuff going on. And this is why Yeshua said the gates of hell. He knew that it was going to need that power to deal with the, the spirit that was going to be behind some of the, these, some of the, you know, what they said it's the, the seven wonders of the world that existed back then. There were demonic powers that, that were defined against Yah that was behind a lot of these structures that they had to uh, compete with. Think about Paul. <laughs> in the book of Acts where he was in Ephesus and he was dealing with uh, the cult of uh, Artemis or the cult of Diana. And they, and they had, they, they, he had the, he, he, he caused the selling of the little idols of Diana Artemis inside of the, 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 the temple in Ephesus. He stopped that. And then he, he, he the, the, the demonic powers stirred up inside the people that they wanted to kill him because they said he he has defiled uh, 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 Diana or Artemis, whose beauty is known throughout Asia. But Paul, through his power and those that was with him, was able to pull down that power. And that's why the, the Bible said, who are these men that have turned the world upside down? We don't see that in our day and time because... You know, as this thing of the 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 gospel message or the whatever message got taken over by the the Gentiles, more and more paganism got implanted into it, so that now at our time, except for during the some of the different little revivals that they might have had from time to time, and then Azusa, it's pretty much been, you know, it's pretty could have been that people grew into uh, a knowledge of 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 of, uh, of of God and the Bible, but they wasn't born again. So that what you had was you had what the the the, the founders of this nation wanted. They said they wanted religion to basically quell the any kind of rebellion that the people would have by using the. The, the the blue laws, Sunday blue laws, where people wasn't supposed to drink on Sunday, wasn't supposed to work on Sunday, and all that was enforced by the state, right? But it never was a thing of the Holy Spirit coming in because people wasn't getting born again. That's just plain, simple fact. It, it became a beloved. Um, it became just like the parable of Yeshua that talked about the the, the tree that, that that grew and it became a resting place for all the fowls of the air or whatever, the unclean spirits. And that's what has happened over since uh, uh, the third century, uh, 300 AD, you know, the Council of Nicaea, when they came in and the paganism kind of flooded in. And now where, where, where we're at, this is why you know, you have 
some you statues, you have stained glass windows, you have these gigantic where the people are worshiping the edifices, the buildings. They say, look at the great, the great um, uh, New Birth Church in Atlanta. It takes up the skyline. It's not talking about the spirit of Yah that's in the people that might be going in there. It's talking about the spirit of that building because it's again it's dealing with the towers built in defiance. And if you can think about all the debauchery and stuff that has happened there at that place, I ain't saying that it might have not did some good, but I'm saying overall, from a spiritual sense, the a lot of the damage that was done by not just new birth, but a lot of these quote unquote mega churches. And even before the mega churches you had, you know, um 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 you know whatever it was great uh uh stadium uh revivals or whatever and, and they say everybody in the stadium you know made a profession for christ or whatever and you know how did the nation get to this point of such evil but it's because babylon it was just like uh, the the head of gold. It was the gold standard. So the gold standard of you know modern day Christianity has been here in America, where you just give you all these numbers, and this is the broad way that Yeshua was saying he said it was gonna that there was gonna be a broad way, and everybody was gonna be going in it, and and indeed you know like I said Sunday you know. It was the time, yeah, when a lot of people that went to church, you know, or whatever, they, they didn't really have a relationship. But it was it was known in America that you had to have the facade of religion. And so we create these 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 towers. And, and that's why you had the the the, the church steeple. The, the church steeple was none, no more than the the obelisk. That's all it was. It was obelisk. And it had the cross on the top, but it was an obelisk. It was Baal's penis, just like what? The Tower of Babel. People don't want to believe that, but that's what the church steeple represents. It was the, the penis of Baal. It was from Catholicism. Catholicism came from Babylonianism. So you had that steeple. But Yah says the weapons of our warfare are mighty through Yah to the pulling down of strongholds. That's why you. That's why I believe you've seen so many church splits because after a while people kind of under, start understanding how is it that things are going so well for for a, a little while and then things go bad. Not to say that they're not, but the system that we have become accustomed to, you can only go but so far in it, and then you you're gonna reach that point where you're gonna understand. And this system was not never meant to 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 make you better. It wasn't, and so this is what we 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 find. Like I said, with uh, anything that Satan does is an illusion at first, and those that wake up to the illusion, they're gonna understand. Hey, I gotta come out of this, right? So Revelations two and three. I'm sorry, I got off on a tangent, but Revelations two and three says this. Uh. 13, I'm sorry. He said, and I know that works. And where, okay, now let's go to verse 12. I'm sorry. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, these things said he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith. Even in those days when Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. Right? But now, what was Satan's seat in Pergamos? Pergam Pergamum, rather, or Pergamos. Pergamos, Pergamum, you can pronounce either way. Pergamos had what they called the Pergamum altar. It was a it was a it was a gigantic altar that had what they call a frieze, which was like these um the sculptured statue work around the base of it showing the battle between these giants and the olympian gods so it was a this is and 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 this is where people would come and make sacrifices to 
what gods I don't know when I read the the history of it, 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 it uh, historians were kind of confused about what was it dedicated there for a battle was it dedicated to gods they don't know but it was indeed sacrifices that was made but apparently this was a seat a place of great power for Satan of people coming there altering offering these offerings on this altar so John was saying you people are being strong in the seat of Satan but even with that if you keep reading, you'll see in verse 14 that he said, even with that, the power at their, them being there at the seat of Satan was, was, was still so strong that it was still allowing false teachings to get in there of Balaam and fornication and, 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 and idol worship uh, uh, before the people and the wicked doctrine of the Nicolaitans, Nicolaitans which... Bible said Yeshua said that he hated, and so this um, was all being a fourth shadow of what was going to happen after the Gentile uh, nations took over the gospel message, and it was going to allow paganism in, and you see all these things in in Catholic and and uh, "Quote unquote Protestant churches, you see the uh, uh, Satanism. You 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 see things being ate that were sacrificed to idols. You know, with Christmas and all these other holidays that people say, ah, oh, it's not that big of a deal. It's not. It's not because Satan's seat is is strong here in America. Satan's seat in in some of these people's denomination headquarters those denominational headquarters are seats of satan and since they give the instructions out to the people out there that's why you know they don't have any problem with some of the stuff that's going on now because their denominational headquarters and some of their churches have become seats of satan they have that's just the point blank i'm so glad it, 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 I came out of this stuff a long time before I even thought, knew anything about Hebrew, or us being Hebrews. I came out of the quote unquote, well, I call it the organized church, because I, I even, I even started telling people I'm not calling myself a Christian because to be called that is to see all this wickedness of these people that's using that term, and I don't want to be associated with it because as I started understanding. This system, this system of Christianity is not, okay, there, the, the, there are people in it that are, are, are believers and saved, but the system itself is not saved. It's not of Yah. It's just like when Yeshua came back in, quote unquote, Judaism, it was not, it was not saving people. Uh, it wasn't. It was, but first of all, it was never meant to to, to do that in, in a sense the people were supposed to be to evolve from it but what the people set up they set up a a a way of if you can check the boxes on this that you're doing in this Judaism thing then you're all right with Yah that's why when Yeshua came he said the scribes and the Pharisees he said you you you're not going into heaven and you try you block anybody else that want to go there too by keeping them in this system that you have and it's basically the same way in christianity and in, especially when it comes to uh like i said different uh persons places and things what, that they won't speak against they won't speak against certain you know like i said monoliths opolis different things they're not gonna speak against those things because it's power of Satan behind these things and they're part of the rebellion too. This is why when they took polls back in the, I think it was the 70s in the Southern Baptist Convention, um, there was a great debate about Freemasonry and, and all this and taking oaths. And they found out that it was so many uh, 
pastors and members that were in the Southern Baptist Church that were into Freemasonry, that they basically couldn't, they just left the subject alone because they said it's just too many. So they capitulate, and that's not, um, that's not to say that there's, you know, uh, there might have been a, a, a pushback, but it was just too much of it. And it's basically was the same thing in the, the quote unquote black church that it is just so pervasive that people just say, let's just leave it alone. And just just allow it to happen. Let's just let it consume. It's been going on for so long. Why are we going to stop it? That as long as we got the structure here, let's try to do, get the best that we can out of it. And we wonder why, uh, you know, whatever it was you wanted to call it is in the shape that it did for, because for some, some short period of time, maybe it was some good that was pulled out of the quote unquote black church or whatever you want to call it. But as soon as we allow certain elements and different things and, and some of our people went off and got educated in some of these other seminaries, it basically became a stumbling block for us also. You know, even the fact that when the Azusa Street revival happened in the, the movement of the spirit. It was some black churches that kind of blocked it. You know, they said that stuff is for the poor, those that, you know, are not educated or whatever, not understanding that, you know, being led by the spirit was important. That's how we were going to be able to pull down some of these strongholds and, and different things that were coming up against us, but we didn't grab hold to it. And then when it it started the breaking of along of um uh color lines, you know, even the quote unquote Pentecostalism got invaded by satanic powers. And that's why when you look at a lot of quote unquote Pentecostal churches, it looks like you're looking at a Catholic uh church with all the regalia and all this other kind of stuff, fish hats and all this stuff. It's, 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 it's totally toast. It, it really is. And that's why they turn some of their places of worship into these places of seats of Satan, monoliths, you know, obelisk towers, you know, um, where people went into the building and thought it was something magical and mystical about going to this place or that place or whatever. Which again goes back to the Tower of Babel, where man was in the fire. Of, yeah, they said we want to, we want to come as we want to. We want, and and they they found astrological uh, symbols that would be around some of the ziggurats or whatever. And basically, the people had turned away from worshiping Yah the way he wanted them to, and they was doing it what the way they wanted. And that's basically what we have today. And Satan creates these persons, places, and things for us to do it and give them grand, uh, glorious names and legends behind them. And people come in there and they feel that, oh, there's something magical about me coming into uh, Mason Temple or whatever, or something magical about me coming to Hampton to the 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 great Baptist conventions that are there. I, I heard one preacher tell me, uh, they had a saying in the Baptist church, if you don't make it to heaven, make it to Hampton. You understand what I'm saying? Make it to that institute, make it to that building, make it to that tower, make it to that statue. This is this is not a yacht. And he, he clearly said it here about the Church of Pergamos that they had taught people to uh, uh, um, uh, uh, what taught them uh, the doctrine of Balaam and to eat things, sacrifice to others and, and commit fornication. And that's that's what you you have in all churches, black, white, Mexican, whatever, Catholic, Protestant, uh, uh, Mormon, whatever. You got it there because this is, it's, 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 they become seats of Satan. But notice, like I said, there were people in Pergamos per per that were Believers, but they was dwelling in the seat of where Satan was at. And it was hard. And it was going to get worse. The revealing of the man of sin was way back then. He was revealed then. We're just coming into the last indentation of it in a different form. 
right? But we got to be in prayer against these things. As Paul stated in 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the weapons of war warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yah to the pulling down of these strongholds. And we, we have to we have to pray against these things. Now, now, now that we're coming into understanding of who we are as a people, um, there, <clears throat> that's why I was so glad to see some of these um, Confederate statues coming down last year. I, 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 and I, and I actually, I actually did a teaching on that uh, last year. So this is almost kind of like a continuation of it, kind of, I guess. But I was so excited to see that because I said this is the book of Daniel where he talked about the 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 the, the mountain the rock cut out of the mountain without hands that hit the feet and the statue crumbled apart to see that but it's it's other um monuments and different things that are built in front to Yah that I believe are gonna physically come down. But I believe when these things come down, the spirit that was behind them came down first, you see. So in order for some of these statues and things to come down, the spirit behind the statues has to be brought down, just like in Pergamos. Uh, you know, Yeshua said, hey, if you don't watch it, I'm going to take your, you know, that uh, candlestick away from you. Or uh, the menorah, because the menorah was the symbol of 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 Israel, and that's what he was. Because John was, he was talking to those that were grafted into the assembly of, excuse me, believers that were, uh, which is the which is the tree, the olive tree, which re represents Israel. You're grafted in as a wild olive branch, but then the natural olive branch is grafted in too. But in the, the case of the um, candlestick, he said, I'll take your light out, Pergamos. And those, all seven of those churches, from my understanding, those cities are ruins today. And of course, the, the, the churches, the, 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 the assemblies are gone. The people are gone. The, Maybe some of the buildings are there, but these these places are ruins now. And Satan moves his seat around. He moves his seat, but I believe he has several different seats. We know that New York City is one of his, his seats. We know that the Vatican is one of his seats. We know that D.C. is one of his seats. We know that... Um, London, the city of London is one of his seats. And, and, and behind all these places, you're going to find these great works of architecture that they say, oh, because in the city of London, they have a statue of Gog and Magog. They even have a, a parade for them every year. You see what I'm saying? So he, these architectural structures are there to represent a spirit that is actually there. So once we will see the spirit behind these structures pull down, I believe that it won't be soon before after that that you will see the literal structures themselves coming down. So to see Robert E. Lee statue come down and all this other stuff of Confederate coming down, just let me know that the spirit behind white supremacy is coming slowly. That spirit, those spirits are being pulled down. And that's what we got to pull. We got to start praying against the spirits. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. As we've seen what happened um, in Washington, D.C. Uh, at the Capitol building or whatever, as they was trying to come there. But then they, and they was ultimately repelled from there. Uh, we, we can see that that is going to be a repelling of the spirits. Uh, that tried to take over the capital, but they was rebuffed. And so that we understand that we got to pray without ceasing. This is this is the this is the this is the battle line that's drawn that we have to get engage in. Uh, believers who believe also that we are the people. 
that we pray against the power structures, not so much the people, but the power structures, the power behind the 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 statues and the in the uh, whatever we are pray that those spirits come down mighty through Yah to the pulling down of strongholds. So that's our lesson today. Um, dealing with the tower is almost ready, and like I said, Satan is trying to rush to to, to finish it so that he can try to offer mankind something quote quote unquote better than what you Yah has to offer but ultimately he's going to fail the tower is not going to be rebuilt it's not going to be Yah is going to destroy it he's going to destroy it and son our king and our redeemer is going to uh put down all rebellion and um going to reign a thousand years and of course you know satan will be let out and there will be one final rebellion but we, we thank most high that we are starting to see this thing dismantled. But let's keep let's keep strong in prayer, people. Let's keep strong in prayer. Let's keep strong in in in, in getting in the word and and um looking for the return. Uh, and that's looking for the, him to pull us out of Babylon, however he does it, whenever he does it. I believe that I'm praying. I have my prayer list. You know, I've been praying these things for a couple of years now and just keep plugging away. I remember when me and my wife, and this is a, you know, my testimony. I'm, I'm, we're going to get ready to end this video. But when we went to the 1619 Festival there in Virginia, uh, they had an obelisk there. They actually had an obelisk. And at that time, I had a ram's horn. I had to send it back because they had a smell to it. I just, but I, anyway, my wife, they took a picture of me. I stood in front of the obelisk there. It was on one of these plantations that they had brought some of the slaves that they had brought from Luongo, some of the first slaves that the British had brought in from the Portuguese. And I stood in front of the obelisk and I blew the horn and I I, 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 I prayed. I said, Father, bring this, bring this obelisk down. I want you to bring it down. I want you to bring the spirit behind it down because these settlements were some of the first settlements where they had enslaved our people and set the blueprint for slavery that was going to be throughout America for the rest of our time here. So I prayed against that and I prayed that, that the power behind that obelisk would come down. It was right there beside the James River. Then when we, me and my wife went to Washington, D.C. to the, uh, we was going to the African American Museum, the National Museum there. Behind the museum is the Washington Monument. It's directly behind the African American Museum. I went up there and I didn't have my ram's horn. My, but I prayed. I said, Father, bring this, this, uh, this, bring this monument down because this is, this is almost saying that we are still under the power of Egypt. I said, bring it down. Bring the spirit of it down, Father. And we know back in the in the 2000s that it was a um earthquake that split the washington monument from i think i want to say out from the bottom all the way up to the top it was an earthquake that was centered in dc and i believe that y'all can bring it the, the we can bring that spirit down behind it and bring it down literally because it's a front to have it right there but that's our lesson today i hope that you enjoyed it I want you to uh, leave a comment. I want you to uh, give a thumbs up and I want you to subscribe and let's continue to pray our strength in the most high. Shalom.